Boom, look what we just got delivered, the EP Cube. Pallet number one is gonna come with all of your batteries. So on this one, we've got five batteries. And then this pallet over here, we get the hybrid inverter and the smart gateway. All right, these weigh 35.20 kilograms. So if we times that by 2.25, these weigh 79.2 pounds each. Oh, that's not too bad. All right, that's not too bad. Okay, what's up everybody? I'm Average Joe and welcome to my channel. All right, today's video is gonna be about an EP cube made by Canadian Solar. If you're not sure what an EP cube is, the EP cube is basically a residential energy storage system, all right? It's a all-in-one system. It comes with a smart gateway, a hybrid inverter and batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries to be matter of fact. You can connect it up to the grid so you can send out your excess solar energy, you know, and get paid for it. Or you can just kind of keep everything in house, which is what I'm going to be doing. And just to let everybody know here real quick, uh, Canadian Solar did reach out to me to see if I want to do some long term testing and post it on my YouTube channel. Obviously, I said yes. So, smart gateway, it's the brain of everything and also everything connects to it. So your hybrid inverter is gonna connect to it. You can do EV charging, you can connect up a generator, which we might do, of course, in another video. Next thing is the inverter, all right? So it comes with a 7.6 kilowatt inverter. It's a hybrid inverter, and that basically means you can push and pull from the grid if that's what you're doing. And it also has the capability to parallel more inverters together. So if you have a really big house or if you just have a lot of stuff you need to power you can parallel multiple inverters together which hopefully in the future I would like to try and of course you can do solar which I do have I've got a couple different arrays which is great because this has four MPPT chargers into it all right and then finally we have your battery like I said earlier they're lithium iron phosphate the minimum that you can get for a system is three batteries or 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours the maximum you can get per stack is six batteries so 20 kilowatt hours so for example if you just had one hybrid inverter on the wall you could have six batteries below that if you wanted to expand you would get another hybrid inverter and then add your batteries to that one right there and it also comes with six gazillion ul certifications all right anyway let's get this party started let's unbox these take a closer look and start getting everything mounted on the wall all right let's get to it all right, here we go. I think I'm just going to leave everything in the boxes for right now until we start mounting it. So I still have four batteries over here to open. I'll open those whenever we mount it to the wall over here. But I can show you real quick what we do have open. So right here is the battery base. Everything basically just stacks right up on top of that. And you can either put this on the wall or on the ground. It came with a template so you know where to drill all your holes. And of course up here, came with some brackets and some hardware. Next to that, we have one of the batteries. Again, these are 3.3 kilowatt hours, and there is some plastic uh, covering on here, so that's not the actual finish. On top of the battery, this is where the connections go. So you can see your positive and negative, and I guess the small ones are probably data. So these plug into the next battery on top or on bottom, and it also connects to the base right down here so that's pretty cool also came with some brackets and some hardware right over here we have the hybrid inverter again it does have that covering on it this piece right here comes off and that's where you make all of your connections on the inside which we will take a look at later and then right up here we have the smart gateway again we'll have to take off the cover to get to all the connections and we'll do that a little bit later for the hybrid inverter of course it came with some brackets some data cables and hardware and all that. Now there is one really important thing in here which you do not wanna lose, which is the resistor, all right? So make sure you put that in a place 
we are not gonna lose it. And the Smart Gateway came with a bracket, came with some CTs, and a manual right there. All right, next part of the video is we're gonna start mounting everything on the wall right over here. We're gonna put the Smart Gateway over here towards the corner, and then to the right of that, we're gonna mount the hybrid inverter and all the batteries. All right, first thing we're gonna do is stick this up to the wall, and whenever we do stick it to the wall, we wanna make sure it is nice and level. Now, I think we have a little leeway in all the brackets and all that kind of stuff, so I don't think this has to be perfect, so don't stress over it. They do have the sticky tape, so you can just put that up there and stick it right to the wall and it won't fall down. All right, so let's get these marked out and drilled and we'll start mounting some brackets. So that is battery one, battery two, battery three, battery five. Since we're using five batteries, the template on here includes the markings for the hybrid, all right? So five batteries, we're just going to mark this one right up here. All right, so just some gee whiz information. The hybrid inverter also came with a template. If I were you, I would use this template because that bottom reference line is perfect. It lines up with the ground perfect. There's no guessing or anything like that. So for a future reference, I would use the one that came with the hybrid inverter. All right, next thing we're gonna do is mark the holes for the base. And what I'm doing for mine is, since my wall isn't very straight, I'm just using a big carpenter's square so I can get a good reference line. And then I'm gonna mount the base 4.13 inches away from the wall. So basically four inches and an eighth. So the next thing we'll do is drill some holes for the base. And whenever I mount the brackets, I'm gonna be using these tap cons. They're quarter inch by one and three quarter. All right, these do come with the drill bit. So that's what I'm gonna be using. <laughs> We have all the holes drilled for the inverter and all the batteries and the base down there. Boom, there we go, nice and level. And then the last one is for the hybrid inverter. All right, now we're gonna put down the base. So I have the brackets on the back already installed and they are loose. And since my floor is unlevel, I am going to shim up this one side with a couple of washers and some shims to make it all level. All right, I've got the base kind of shimmed out how I want it. So we can put in our tap cons and tighten everything down. And the bolts back here on the bracket, they're a 10 millimeter. Battery number one. For the mounting back here, we're gonna need one bracket that has the floating nut plate in it. We're gonna need this bracket right here and four screws. So the first bracket obviously goes right here. And again, you can use a 10 millimeter or, oops, again, you can use a 10 millimeter or a Phillips head screwdriver. Next bracket goes right here. And again, these go back and forth. And this one back here goes up and down, obviously, just in case your wall is not straight like mine. Boom, there you go. Four screws, two brackets. Got to do that for each one. Now that we have all the batteries stacked up and mounted on the wall, the next thing we gotta do is attach these little brackets with these machine screws right here on the side, all right? So two screws, one bracket. All right, now that we have all the batteries mounted to the wall, the next thing we have is the hybrid inverter. And I'm pretty sure it weighs about the same as the batteries, so it's probably best if you have two people, but I'm gonna attempt to do it by myself. So. Here we go. And just a side note for the bottom of the inverter, the battery cable and connections are loose. So just kind of shove those inside before you put it up on the batteries. We're almost there. We're just caught on the bracket in the back. All right, just like the battery install down below, the inverter goes the same exact way. Last thing we gotta do is attach the little tiny bracket just like we did right down here with the batteries. Alrighty, last thing we're gonna do is mount the smart gateway up on the wall right back here. I'm gonna mount it a little bit taller than the stack of batteries and the inverter. The reason for that is, is later on, I would like to get the sixth battery or the last battery that you can put 
in a stack right here, which will push up the hybrid inverter. Basically, I just need to make sure I account for that whenever I mount it to the wall. All right, got the bracket installed. We got three tap cons holding it up. And whenever we install or hang the smart gateway, it's basically gonna be hanging on these two tabs right here. And on the back of the smart gateway, it's gonna be hanging on this bracket right here. And then to lock it in place, we're gonna be putting some bolts through there. And then the bolts will go right through here to tighten it down. All right, smart gateway is not nearly as heavy. All right, last thing is, is installing those last two 10 millimeter bolts, one on each side. Yeah, I know, super sexy. All right, now that we have the smart gateway and the batteries and the inverter all mounted to the wall, the next thing we're gonna do is start running all the conduit and all the wiring. Before I pull off the cover for the inverter, I was just gonna show you right here, we have your PV1 and 2, PV3 and 4. These are your shutoffs. And then you also have a battery fuse right over here. All right, we'll go ahead and pull off this cover right here so we can get to all the wiring. All right, so we have the Tigo rapid shutdown transmitter right here. Right below that, we have some communication connections. We have your AC output. And then at the bottom here, we have your PV input. So you got PV one, two, three, and four. Right over here, we have the two areas where you can go in and out of the inverter. So smart gateway at the top, PV at the bottom. I think whenever I do my install, I'm actually going to swap those around because it'll be easier for my wiring. And then finally, right over here in the right-hand corner is your battery connection. So from the batteries down below to the inverter. On the bottom of the smart gateway, it's got a bunch of different places for different knockouts. You could basically cut whatever hole you would want. And I think for my installation, I'm just gonna be cutting out two holes. I'm gonna do a one and a half inch over here, and then I'm gonna be doing a three quarter inch right over here. Next, I'm doing the PVC conduit, and I already glued all of these together and fit checked it and all that kind of stuff and saved you all all the time for that. We're gonna start working on the wiring next, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I think what I'll do is just explain what we're doing, and then I'm just gonna do it, okay? So uh, we're gonna be using two gauge or number two wire from the main panel to the smart gateway. And then from the smart gateway, it's gonna split off into two different directions, one to the hybrid inverter over here, and then the other one to the sub panel right over here. And we're gonna be using number six wire or six AWG wire. We're gonna run some data cables from over here over to the hybrid inverter. And then we're also gonna be installing some CT clamps over here on the main wires where they come in from the utility. After that, we'll start on the DC wiring. That's gonna come from the hybrid inverter and then it's gonna go up over the smart gateway up and then outside to the solar panels. All right, well, I can't think of anything else. So let's get started. And just so everybody's aware, everything is clearly marked in here. So right up here, you have your grid L1, L2. Right over here, you have your neutral. Right over here is your ground. Here's the hybrid inverter. And then right over here are the outputs for your sub panel. All right, on the sub panel side, we got our two hots right here, and then we have our neutral right back there under the neutral bar, and then this green wire right here is our ground, and that's a separate ground since this is a sub panel. Since I'm going into a breaker right here to back feed this panel, this circuit breaker up here is still from the grid. The only reason I do that is because having the grid here as well allows me to shut off the EP cube and then turn on the grid power. And that could be for any number of reasons. Maybe I wanna add another battery or the inverter. If I shut the system down, I can go ahead and still power my house with grid power right here. All right, so, so basically this is part of 
the lockout system. So over here on the inverter when connecting your wires, there's no bolts or anything like that to tighten down. Basically you have to push down these little orange tabs all the way and then insert your wire all the way. Okay, once it's in there, release. All right, and then you can give it a little tug and there you go, it's not coming out. All right, next is the data cables and if you look at all terminals, each one is marked and they correspond with each wire. And this is pretty much the same thing, just make sure you push down the tab all the way and insert your wire. All right, one other thing we're gonna put in here is that resistor I said to set aside. Basically, I just bent it in this shape right here and then it's gonna be installed in the upper two holes which is CAN H1 and CAN L1. All right, now that we have all the AC wires ran, now we're gonna start working on the DC wires. So we're gonna be connecting two arrays to two of the MPPT solar charge controllers over here in the hybrid inverter. Anytime you come into a building, a structure, or your home, your PV wires, your DC wires, have to be in a metal raceway or conduit. That's why we're gonna be using the flexible conduit, the metal clad type. Uh, basically because it's easy, we can route it wherever we want. What we're gonna do is come out of the hybrid inverter, kinda go into an L, and we're gonna go up, and then over the smart gateway, and then up to the side of the house into a metal box. All right, you remember me saying earlier, this has four separate MPPT solar charge controllers. This is where you're gonna put all of your positive wires, and then right over here is where you're gonna put your negative wires. All right, now that we have all the wires ran and connected, I think it's time to start powering this up. In order for us to do that, we have to download the EPQ app because there's no other way to get in this other than the app. And they do have it for Android and iOS. We're gonna download the app, install it, and then log into our account so we can commission this. And of course, if I didn't mention this earlier in the video, there is a couple hour training in order for you to install this. So I did get an installer EPCube app, which just gives me a couple of more features and allows me to commission this. All right, so we'll be connecting with Bluetooth and also we're gonna be setting up the Wi-Fi connection and I think it's also a backup connection. So there's two antennas right up here that's gonna connect to your Wi-Fi so you can log in from the app you know, anywhere in the world. If you ever have to make any changes though, big changes, you know, like adding another battery, inverter, or anything else like that, you will have to come down here and connect with Bluetooth. And before we put this cover on, there is a connection over here in the corner, which connects the batteries to the inverter. So line it up with the alignment pins and push it down. All right, now that the covers are back on, let's go ahead and see if we can get this powered up. So, first thing you do, obviously, is the connector inside. Next is the battery fuse. And then we turn on our solar arrays. And here the fans kick on over here, which kind of scared me, to be honest. And of course, to power this on, you do have to have grid connection. Next is the circuit breaker for the hybrid inverter. And then we turn on the grid power. And then we're just gonna follow along in the app right here. So add device. All right, looks like the first thing we gotta do is scan everything in. So I'm gonna start with the smart gateway. And I grab that pretty quickly. I'm gonna call mine average cube. All right, and we go over to the hybrid inverter. Now it's asking for the batteries and the base. And this works pretty quick, actually. All right, we got everything scanned in. And now it's asking for our device location. So we're gonna go ahead and select wherever you're at. All right, we'll go to the Bluetooth configuration. Connect to that. Allow. Go to Wi-Fi configuration. We're gonna configure that. Now we're connected to Wi-Fi. Next is the device update. All right, so enter the EP cube update. Oh, the upgrade process could take up to 40 to 50 minutes. All right, here we go, update. All right, looks like that could take a couple of minutes. I will be right back. All right, there we go, update is complete. And honestly, it didn't take very long, maybe 20, 30 minutes. All right, so we'll hit the finish button here. All right, now it's asking us for what kind of backup we're gonna do. Since I'm just powering a sub panel only, we're gonna do a partial backup. Next, it's asking for grid standard, and that's gonna be based on your location. So you wanna get in contact with your utility company so you know exactly which one to pick. 
I'm just gonna hit internal standard. All right, next question is, is if you're gonna be exporting to the grid. And we're not gonna be doing that here, so I'm gonna leave that button turned off. Next part is asking for any other accessories that we might have, like the e-stop button, which I don't have at this current time, since I'm just using the ground mount panels. Whenever I connect the roof arrays, then I'll need the e-stop, which we'll be doing probably in another video. So I'm gonna hit none. And of course, the next thing is those two expansion ports right here, if you're hooking up a generator or EV charging, that's where you would do that. And then of course, lastly, how many hybrids we have, we only have one. All right, next is the hybrid configuration, quantity of hybrids. All right, and then the next thing is configuring all of your arrays that you have. We only have two. So we're gonna go ahead and enter in our volts open circuit. Since I need to reconfigure my arrays, they're all in a 2S configuration right now. So two panels in series. I'm gonna be on the low end for the MPPT charging, but that should be just fine. I have my volts open circuit is 137.6, submit that. Next one is for like 4G and stuff like that. Basically, if you lose your network, it still can connect to the internet. So we'll query, query device for network state. Okay, we'll activate it. Next one is the warranty registration. And here we have to upload a whole bunch of pictures. So basically all the connections that were in here, in here, and over here in the main panel. All right, we'll go ahead and upload all of our pictures of all of our connections. We'll hit finish. All right, so I just had to change the batteries in my camera real quick. All right, so the setup process was real easy, just following everything on the screen and everything worked just fine. So what we're gonna do next is power everything on. All right, so there's a little button down here on the bottom. We'll go ahead and turn that on and we turn on the power button right over here. All right, now that we have everything turned on, we're still not powering you know, through the house or anything like that yet because we haven't switched it over. We can look on the screen here real quick. We're actually recharging from solar right now, like 600 watts. It's pretty early right now. And we're also on the self-consumption mode, which we could change. We could actually change to the backup mode, submit that, and this will start recharging from the grid. Now that we have a switch to battery backup mode, it's gonna start recharging from solar and grid. So while the batteries are recharging, there's a few things we can do. We could actually flip the house over to the EP cube and do the pass-through mode. Uh, we can still power the house as normal because we're in battery backup mode. That just basically means power comes in, goes through the EP cube, and then out to your house, and that's pretty much it. In order for us to switch over to the EP cube, we need to go through our generator transfer switch right here. So top one is the grid as normal. If we flip over to this breaker, we switch through the EP cube. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we're gonna turn off the utility power. See the lights go out, flip that up, and turn that on. All right, now that we flip that over, we're technically powering my house with the EP cube, kind of. We're in pass-through mode because we're in battery backup mode. We're not in self-consumption mode yet because batteries are low and we need to recharge them. So anyway, I could show you on the app right now, we are, we're actually pulling 7.2 kilowatt from the grid. So we're charging and powering my house right now. My house is only drawing 420 watts and we're bringing 740 watts of solar. So we're actually charging quite a bit from the grid. So, all right, so it's gonna take a little bit of time to recharge the batteries. So while it's doing that, uh, we can go ahead and throw on these two covers right here. And we can also put the side covers on up here. All right, well, I mean, we're full charge, so we're gonna be in self-consumption mode if I haven't mentioned that before. So what that actually means is during the daytime, we're gonna be using solar and battery to power the house. Any excess is just gonna stop at those two CTs that we installed earlier, okay? Anything else, the solar has nowhere else to go for now. And then at nighttime, of course, we're gonna continue powering the house off the batteries. You know, that's the whole idea behind this thing. Well, there's a few different ways. Basically, you wanna to try to use the batteries and solar as much as possible. And if you don't produce enough or the batteries are dead or whatever, it's gonna automatically pull from the grid as needed. Basically, what this is trying to do is prevent you from using electricity from the grid unless you have to, all right? That's the whole idea behind this. And if you're doing the net metering or grid tie, you know, then you can sell back your excess. Oh, and if I didn't mention earlier in the video, you can also do time of use. This can automatically switch you over to battery and solar during that high rate time, and then switch you back over to grid power 
whenever you get your lower rate. So if you want to do something like that, you can. And then of course there's also battery backup mode, which that's what we're using at this moment because we wanted to recharge the battery quick. Uh, basically it'll just sit here and wait for a power outage. So you'll be in pass through mode, you know, grid will be coming through and just passing through this whole system you know, and it's gonna power your house as normal, just like it would from the utility. And then when power goes out, this will automatically switch over and continue powering your house. Occasionally we might use it like that, but for the most part, we're gonna be using self-consumption mode. So we can basically run our house off of battery and solar. And then if we don't produce enough, we can pull from the grid whenever we need it. All right, so anyway, enough of that. So if we take a look at the app, you can see we're drawing from the grid because that's basically, we're coming in, going through the smart gateway, powering my house right here, okay? We're also bringing in a little bit of solar. And if you look down here, you can see backed up loads. That's basically my house. All right, and we're still in battery backup mode. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch to self-consumption mode, and that basically means we're gonna be powering my house from the EP cube only. So let's go to battery backup. We'll hit self-consumption mode. I've got the reserve state of charge set at 10%. And what that means is at nighttime or really any time, if we drain the batteries down to 10%, it'll switch back over to pass-through mode. It won't be running off the batteries anymore. It'll just be going from the panel over to the smart gateway and then over to the panel, just as it would from the utility. All right, anyway, let's hit um, submit. All right, so now we're in self-consumption mode. And what we're gonna do now is basically simulate a blackout and maybe we can see the lights flicker. We can see how fast the transfer is, etc. All right, so here we go. We're gonna shut off the grid to the system right now and you saw a little tiny flicker. I heard a little noise over here, it must have been the transfer switch, and now everything is running off the EP cube. So there you go, if you look at the app now, we're drawing in solar, as much solar as we can, and we're powering everything from the EP cube or the batteries right here. So that's pretty awesome. Boom, there we go. Everything is powered from the EP cube. We're in self-consumption mode. Basically, whenever there's enough sun, we'll be powering my house off the sun and recharging the batteries. If there's not enough, then we're going to consume a little bit from the grid. That's basically how I'm going to be using it. You don't have to use it for net metering or anything like that, which I don't plan to do, at least for now. So anyway, I'm not fully finished yet. There's still some stuff that I have to do. I still have two solar panel arrays on the roof. However, there's a few things I need to do in order to get that over here. And then we'll also have to put an emergency stop button outside. Maybe later on, whenever I do get another hybrid inverter and some more batteries, because I would really like to do that, then we can start powering the bigger loads which actually, maybe in another video, we might try to power some of that stuff with just this right here. Do we think it can do it? I don't know. And then of course we have to do my famous simulated blackout test, because I love to do those tests. And all we do for that is shut off the main power and see how everything runs and how long it'll run for. Uh, that'll be coming up in another video. Now there's a few more things I wanted to mention before I let you go real quick is the EP Cube team, they're always optimizing and updating this whole installation and commissioning process. So if you're installing this you know, in the future, it might already be easier for you to install and commission, even though this was already pretty easy to install and commission. Uh, if you're ever curious about the installation process, you know, and all that kind of fun stuff, I'll just flash a little QR code up here. It's gonna take you right to their website for more information, you know, about all of that kind of stuff. The last thing I wanted to mention real quick is I went to the RE Plus down in Las Vegas this year. It was pretty crazy, by the way. Anyway, Canadian Solar did have a booth there and they were launching their new EP Cube Lite. It's kind of the same as we have here. However, the only thing that's different is it only comes with two batteries, not a minimum of three, and then it does not come with a smart gateway. It comes with this other small box. Now, it's kind of designed for the people that aren't real interested in entire home battery backup system. It's more designed for time of use and the net metering 3.0. Of course, it is quicker to install. There's less parts. You only get two batteries, and then, of course, that little tiny box. Yes, the inverter does come with it. So if you're interested in something like that and not an entire battery backup system, you know, I'm gonna have all that information down below. All right, that's pretty much all I got. Don't forget to like that smash button, and I will see you on the next one. 
Did you come over here to inspect? You want to take a look? You do? All right, well, go ahead. Take a look. Let me know what you find. All right, everything looks good. Thank you.